researching and applying the current answer to chess concepts. We're not looking to add anything. We're looking to properly consolidate everything that we've learned within our mantra and the basics for the answer to chess for ourselves. Looks like we've got a thinker here and they're flicking on and off. So that means we potentially are going to be in trouble. Um, from my years of playing, when I see this signal flicking on and off, it suggests we're going to be in trouble. Okay, right, so let's develop the knight. You'll see why in the game. We don't know anything about this player, but look at it, keep flicking off and flicking on. Doesn't necessarily mean a bad signal. There's something else going on. Just be aware of that. Let's um, bring the knight here. So we'll attempt to utilize the answer as best possible. Um, we know what we're dealing with here now, so let's just play it nice and steady. Just bring the bishop out, doing the basics. Get ready for castle in king safety. I think the more experience you get, especially playing online, little quirky type things that you see during the games, um, you'll you'll sort of put your own slant to it based on what actually happens during the game all right so what we're going to do we're just going to hit the knight here and take the knight off the board take the pawn and potentially looking to move the knight or maybe just develop or maybe just protect the pawn I think this is, it was still flicking wasn't it and then it stops flicking when it gets to the end of the game not nearer to the end of the game and that's where we may be able to gain some advantage uh, What can we do? I'm going to go here, baiting the pawn. We can capture, but there's a load of space around our king Gary, so you can expect a big kingside pawn swarm. Look at it flicking like crazy. All right, so the bishop's going to be taking pawn takes, so let's just bring this here. I was going to be attacking their bishop, but they've spotted that. Um, with their magical flicking thing going on. If ever you play somebody like that and it's flicking, don't lay out too much hope that you're going to win. Yep, just have a good practice, see if you can beat the flicker. Okay, so it's protected everything. Could go for doubling the pawns. Could keep this here. I might double the pawns in front of my king. Let's go here. Is there potential for this or is he just going to block down with the flicker? Bishop takes, bishop rook takes. I don't think they'll allow us that. Queen's down, it's attacking here, so we could potentially just do what we said. We're going to attack the bishop. It's got the queen, king, sorry. I'm going to attack the bishop. Just pacing it. I'm just attempting to see what it is they're trying to do. Obviously, is attacking the king area. That's the answer process. Could bring this here, but are we weakening any spots because it's got a diagonal through to here? Is there anything else? Attacking his um, queen. Attacking his queen, it almost looks trapped, but it's going to be a queen exchange. Look at it flicking like crazy. But if we do move, if we do, do that, his queen's going to take the pawn here because it's got no protection. 
so a smaller piece could attack it and then you'll either try and squeeze in here let's just do that a smaller piece attacking the higher piece flicking like crazy little flicker could go for the queen exchange because it's got nowhere else to go let's just do that could go here I suppose but then we can hit it and it might be struggling for a place then yeah okay let's take so it looks like we're circumventing the main attack I think now he's doubling the pawns super flicker you'll very rarely stand a chance against a super flicker it's got a 2 on 1 on this pawn and we can't push the pawn up so it's like these sort of things you know where you're playing against a flicker they will they will get these types of detailed move, movements so I'm going to move the king up supporting because it's got a 2 on 1 try and make the king active still flicking so he's not gone maverick yet he's not gone by himself I like it when I beat the flickers um, I really do because it shows that we're doing things almost right in terms of our own personal development but it really is hard um, so the knight's down is attacking this pawn but at the same time he's got a fork here see the magic so I'm going to bring the rook here just protecting the pawn so all we can do is have a look and see what it is they potentially can do if we can defend against it then so be it so if we attack the knight where's he going probably just going to still flicking like crazy I can just see it in the corner of my eye yes so we can't take because of the x-ray through so if we bring the king around away from the rook absolute little flicker the answer to chess we're seeing everything <laughs> we're seeing everything in this um workshop but also i'm hoping you know if anybody does watch this you know um these little tiny things like these sort of things of the flicker yeah like the certain amount of time they take to make a move and then looking at the quality of the moves the, you start to get a good feel for what is proper human and what is magical and I think you have to learn that or else you kind of like you'll end up just um, going cr absolutely crazy so this if we take is there a problem we're giving him the file if he pushes pushes something looks like it's gone wrong there so I'm going to take the knight so if he pushes our pawn can take if he takes our bishop not really going to take because obviously the bishop is defending so that's probably what they've done isn't it so they take I have to move the bishop bishop looks a little bit jammed in so we go here attacking this pawn so we go and attack this pawn which potentially has a check on the king but we don't think we're going to get away with that so we're going to try and challenge the rook and see if we can get some ownership of a file so he's actually gone and defended so yeah i think something went wrong somewhere so i'm going to bring the rook like we said see if we can own the file maybe put a two on one on the pawn And attack this pawn at the same time still flicking so just keep doing what we're doing as best possible see what we can potentially do what the opponent can potentially do kings move now so it looks like they're kind of struggling to find stuff to do which is good for us let's just bring the rook here like we said if there's any doubling needed so he's protecting this pawn we could attack he doesn't have to take though so if we take with the bishop then the bishop is on the rook then the rook comes here
then we take I think take him with the bishop I'm going to take with the bishop rook comes to challenge we take rook takes bring our rook here attacking he doesn't have to take obviously he's not doing any of that so he's giving up the rook which is fine by us so i think it's all kind of falling apart now for them which i'm so happy for if we beat the flicker the answer to chess process workshop today is yeah i'm really chuffed i'm really chuffed and i know there'll be people saying oh well no it's the the connection's probably just wrong you know but realistically that i'm not wearing them apples based on my experience so i'm going to go for simple doubling they're probably going to want to try and get the king out but i don't know if they're going to get enough time so we can get the rook off the board and take so his bishop's going to come here to protect but we will get the bishop off the board still flicking So it gave them advantages in the earlier part of the game. I thought they were building up quite nicely, but then I think maybe they took the hand off of the flicking thing and did something wrong in the centre here with the poor manoeuvre. So we could just push forward. Just take, I don't think we need to do anything extremely special. Like we said, bishops coming here to attack the queen. Yep. And this is kind of pretty plain sailing, so I would expect probably a resignation, but they're still carrying on. I am very pleased with that. Very pleased. King's still coming down, so maybe we need to look at... The rook is blocking the king from coming here, so we could actually hit the king. Just to say, go away. Don't want you taking our pawns. And if we pushed here, he pushes down, we take. Yeah. So I'm still looking on my back end, um, just because I've got more pieces. I don't want them getting any benefits whatsoever. Just move this out of the way and then start pushing this pawn up. Excellent. So it had a really meaty opening. I don't, I'm not going to be putting checks on, let's just push the pawn. So he's going to push in the center. He wants this pawn to be going for a nice little swim. Let's go here. Comes here. Take. Check. That should be it, shouldn't it? Let's put a check. So the idea I'm working on here is that just because I've got more pieces and I could push the pawn up there, what I hate most is that magical position that they find when they've got these loose pawns on the other side and then somehow they end up getting a queen because you've not actually blocked off their potential promotion pathway. So this is me focusing purely on that, trying to get rid of any promotional aspects that they can have. And it's a, it's a small shift in the mindset because there's quite a lot of games where I've played where I've felt like I've been benef in benefit, pushing forward. And yes, I could potentially then go and get a, a, a queen. 
but somehow their pawns are a little bit faster so i think this has really helped this is a good exercise this is a good game so now there's no pot no potential way for them to get any promotions whatsoever i think that's a really good practice of the lessons learned It might seem obvious, but when you're actually in the games, and what, when I've watched other, other people's games as well, a lot of people do fall into that mindset of, oh, I've got loads of pieces and I can start pushing my pawns up. But they can't, we, we kind of forget that the opponent can do stuff to us too. So what I'm going to do now is just bring the rook here, sit it here, ramp this pawn up, whilst giving them something to think about with this pawn. So they should probably resign at this point. They may be looking for some magical stalemate type position. Or they might not make a move at all and the flicker might stop. that's surreal for a brief moment there when I said when the flicker might stop it stopped <laughs> that is surreal it did stop look at that it stopped oh and it's back again <laughs> <laughs> that's funny I like looking at these tiny details of games it does make me laugh And the resign button is eluding again. It's a bit rude, really. Okay, that was, um, I think that was a brilliant game for practicing the answer to chess. I would say in its fullest form because we got to practice and explain to ourselves the reasons why we're doing, especially in the end game, um, while we're clearing out house for the opponent so that they can't do anything to us. On occasions, you know, you might be a clear promotional prospect and you're faster than them, so you can do that. But when it's a little bit more detailed, where they've got a few more pawns and the king is looking to edge its way down, you have to be a little bit careful and you have to, to make sure that they cannot promote before you or get in a stalemate position. <laughs> 